I do want to let you guys know I have absolutely no idea what's about to happen. I have not done this off camera. So we're about to find out for the first time together. This is my 2022 wrecked. I didn't wreck it. Somebody wrecked it, not me. <laughs> wrecked Indian Chief Dark Horse. At the time, it was the cheapest Indian Chief Dark Horse you could buy in the country because it came from an internet auction. And the crazy person in me bought this bike without physically seeing it in person. And I revealed to you guys in the last video this bike and my whole idea of being an average person, a regular person, and trying to figure out how to fix this bike, getting it from an auction and taking it from a salvage to a rebuilt state. And in this video, I'm gonna try to figure out all of the little bits and pieces of damage that this bike has, and we're gonna try to figure out what the next course of action is to get it fixed. I mean, obviously, the bike has a crap ton of damage, and I mean, I can't just take the bike back. So, I mean, at this point, I just gotta keep going with it, right? Now, the biggest concern that I have for this bike is whether or not the frame had some type of crack or some type of bend in it. Because when I bought this bike, I purely bought it off of pictures that I saw because I wasn't allowed to go to the auction yard to physically see the bike, even though it was only two and a half hours from me because I don't have the proper license. So, when people are buying bikes like this, you'd expect to, I guess, get some type of estimation on what the damage is. But just from a few minutes glance, you can see that things like this, this has been, the brackets messed up, the lights are probably messed up. But it doesn't tell the full story on things like what's damaged behind this panel. So this is the primary cover. And this portion, this, uh, this cover right here, or the derby cover, is actually pushed in, so that's not, revealing whether or not something behind this is messed up. Or maybe the airbox cover, that's also pushed in. Could be something behind here pushed in, restricting airflow. So there's many different things that you try to budget out for, and it would suck if you thought you had it all figured out, and you start ordering parts, and then when you start taking things off, you realize I'm like, crap, there's more stuff that's messed up behind here that I didn't account for. And of course, more money is coming out of your pockets, and this project has a budget initially and then it ends up just running over because too much stuff is wrong with the bike. But like I said, it's not like I can just take the bike back to the auction and say like, hey, hey yo, just give me my money back. This, they, they, I didn't expect all this. Because I mean, these auctions are sold as is. Bids are final. Auctions are final. So I mean, at this point, like I said, I'm kind of just stuck with it. So wish me luck because uh, this, this, this is a situation. Before the bike even got here, I grabbed me a copy of the service manual so I could figure out how many of these different parts connect. Prime example is this tank. There's a fuel pump in this tank, and I know that somebody, I'm, I'm gonna blame Thor, he punched the left side of the tank. And luckily he didn't punch the right side because on the right side of the tank, that is where the fuel pump assembly is located. So more than likely when I take this tank off and disassemble the fuel pump assembly, I can reuse that on the new tank if I decide to get a new tank because I really don't know I really don't know what to do with this tank just yet. The issue I'm having with this tank is I've already reached out to somebody in Georgia asking them could this tank be repaired because I know they repair motorcycle tanks and <laughs> I've seen them repair small dents like maybe there's a dent here or maybe there's a dent here but yo this is a full on like crater. <laughs> And essentially they said that for the amount of money that I would pay to get this tank fixed, I probably could just buy a brand new tank that's already painted and be completely done with it. So I don't really know what to do with the tank, but like I said, the fuel pump assembly is on this side of the bike and there's nothing to my knowledge on this side of the tank. So we should be able to just take this tank off and uh, put all the new parts or the same parts on the new tank. Now, obviously this trim piecing is also messed up. We're not even gonna get into this wiring because God, freaking wiring. But um, like I said in the last video, they did leave me a bit of fuel. So once we get the bike started or hooked up, I guess we could start it. But I don't really know if I even want to trust that gas. I literally just changed the fuel pump assembly on my Suzuki M109R. So I'm probably the last person that wants to deal with any type of bad gas. So no, I'm I'm. Definitely not gonna use that gas again. I'm curious what you guys think about what to do with this tank. And if you know somebody that specializes in this, definitely let me know down in the comments because 
It all depends on how much it costs and the time involved to fix it versus just getting a new one. Because if this was like a one of 50 CBO or one of 100 limited edition Indian motorcycle paint job, yeah, it would make sense to try to get this thing, this thing fixed and then try to paint match. But the fact that this is like a dime a dozen matte black paint job is really not that special. And being that this tank is, I think, $1,400 to $1,500 brand new painted, Ooh, that uh, that's that's a significant chunk of change. So I'm trying to look at the best possible way to handle this. But either way, if this thing is fixed, it still has to be painted. So yeah, let me know what y'all think about that. Speaking of paint, I have no idea why somebody decided to Plasti Dip a matte finished fender with matte Plasti Dip. How do I know it has matte Plasti Dip on it? Look at that. Who? Who decided to just, why would you even, why? I think I'm lying, look at this, this is Plasti Dip, y'all. Why would you even, why would you do this? Why? The front fender also is bent, you can see that. That has a slight bend in it, so that's gonna have to be repaired as well. And coming back to the fender of why, and nope. <laughs> You can also see that it is also not uh, square, it's actually bent. So I'm gonna have to find a metal shaper to uh, fix this and bend it back in place because this piece, I, if I remember correctly, this is probably right at $1,000 to fix or get a brand new one. And this one is right at, I think, $700 to get a brand new one painted. So I'm gonna try to scourge that as much as I can. Oddly enough, both the spring and the damper are damaged. They're bent like that. I was hoping that it was just the spring, but further examination, and I'm actually gonna take this off at some point and look at it a little bit further, but both the spring and the damper are damaged. I could have just bought just this if it was just the, uh, the spring, but unfortunately that is not the case. The other one appears to be just fine, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a situation. I said before that the primary cover it's scuffed up, it's got grass in it, so I don't know what behind this is damaged, but I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna take a look. And also the primary cover is also scuffed up. More than likely this can be buffed out, so I'm not too worried about that. This kickstand is messed up, it is bent. I might be able to get a metal shaper to put that back in place and bend it back, I do not know. Um, but it does keep the bike um, from falling over as of right now and also i can re uh, reuse that spring but as you guys can see also there's no left foot assembly there's no shifter because it was completely sheared off in the accident and in fact you can see right there those are two bolts that are broken off into the frame so i'm going to take a left hand drill bit and i'm going to try to back that out um but luckily the saving grace is you can get your hand behind it so worst case scenario i just drill it out but it should be no problem. But uh, also you can see right there, the shifter piece that actually engages uh, the clutch, it is completely broken off. What used to be here was an entire license plate bracket. It is completely gone. The uh, signal is still here. That's good. It needs to be buffed out. If I can't buff it out, uh, I don't know. Lost it, paint it, I don't know. But it more than likely still works, I would think. But on this side, this one is actually broken. I wonder, can that be uh, put back somehow and glued? I don't know, we're gonna figure that out. But another piece that's broken or missing, there is a piece right here that basically comes down and it allows the license plate bracket to go pivot like this it is completely gone, so that would have to be uh, gathered as well. Self-explanatory, there's like no exhaust, or at least there's no exhaust exit. Um, I don't know what this is because the ends on the stock exhaust are smaller. I don't know if this was a part of a aftermarket exhaust and it's not there anymore. Let me show you this. This is a stock Indian Scout exhaust, and you can see, yeah, it doesn't fit in there, it's too, it's too small. 
But my point is, is that the stock Indian Chief exhaust has an end just like this. So I'm not sure what was there before, but obviously this bike has been sent out in the rain, so it rusted out. So yeah, I'm gonna have to replace that exhaust and figure out what's going on with that. You probably think I'm crazy, right? Yeah, I, I'm totally crazy, but hey, yo, smash that thumbs up button. Cause whoa, we are just getting started. Seriously. I mentioned before that this tank trim piece was messed up, even though it does not contribute to the bike running, it is a visually messed up piece. And the thing with insurance is that if they see that there's any scuff on any of these components, they're gonna deem that as a part that needs to be replaced, which contributes to the bike being deemed as a total loss. On the front of the bike, we got the headlight assembly that's completely, it, it sheared off. This is that really nice headlight that, that comes standard on the Indian Chief that's also available for the FTR and the Sky Bobber, but I mean, on my bike, it didn't come standard because it's, 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 it's sheared off. On the handlebars, we're missing the very important four inch ride command display that gives you all of your information about the bike. It is not there. And also the wiring harness is damaged. So the wiring harness is actually right here. This is the sub harness. This is not the main harness on the bike. So you don't have to replace the entire harness to replace this. This is actually, I think around right at 40 bucks for this one piece, maybe 20 for this piece. What I'm thinking about doing is actually replacing these connectors. I'm having trouble figuring out what type of connectors these are. I think these are Molex connectors. So if you are, uh, I guess, well versed in figuring out what these connectors are, let me know down in the comments what you think this connector is to lead me in the right direction because that would, uh, it would be kind of fun replacing these connectors versus trying to replace a perfectly good harness because it's not broken off or anything. It's just the connectors are broken. So this is the, I want to say the antenna for the bike. It's either the antenna or it's the USB. I do not know. Um, but this is the, uh, the GPS, I think for the bike, it says this faces to the sky so that's the gps and this is normally covered up but it's obviously it's messed up there's a dent in the gas cap that i mean stuff like that i'll probably just leave it alone that then that's not a big deal um the handlebars um the handlebars are bent right we're missing a left grip we are missing uh more than just the uh clutch um i guess attachment to the handlebar we're also missing the clutch switches. There's a clutch switch that goes on here as well that's missing. And I think that clutch switch is like a hundred bucks. There's also the entire left assembly or switch control that's missing. That controls like the uh, navigating the infotainment on the uh, bike, the signal lights, the emergency lights. Um, and I wanna say the music and also, well, the cruise control is on that side. So yeah, it controls basically navigating the infotainment on the bike. That's missing. Looks like somebody had a quad lock right here. That's <laughs> completely gone. And also the clutch uh, handle assembly right here on the back, but this front piece is still here. So that is good news because I wanna say these two things together is probably like 80 bucks. I don't know, it might be 40, but these parts are more expensive because you're buying them individually versus buying the bike already assembled. So it's kind of like the whole idea of mass production and uh, them having to produce individual components and selling them. But um, yeah, it, you can see clearly how this stuff adds up fast. Coming around to check the frame, I'm gonna show you guys this. To my knowledge, the frame is still square. So this is the left side of the frame. You see everything's kind of in line. And on the right side, you can see between the tire and the belt pulley, things are pretty much in line. And also, I know you're probably thinking that's twisted. No, that is actually stock. That is how that's supposed to be, that twist in that uh, exhaust frame. Um, so for the most part, I'm pretty sure that everything is still square on this bike, but it looks just, it's just so weird to look at because you got the signal lights are off, that's bent, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, fender's bent, the tank's bent. It's just so much on this bike, it's just dented up. I'm actually gonna move the bike around. I'm gonna show you exactly why I don't have a table lift for the bike. This out. I'm gonna move this bike. This out. Get out of the way. 
I said the word table jack, but I meant to say table lift. And the reason I don't have one is because I'm still figuring out where I want the bikes to be in the garage. Like now I have power so I can keep them on the charge. But with this maneuverable jack, it's actually a motorcycle lift I got from Harbor Freight for like a hundred bucks. It's made by Pittsburgh. It can hold up to 1500 pounds. <laughs> I haven't gotten close to that and I don't plan on to, but this bike is only 670 pounds, but I can lift it up, move the bike around where I want to versus the table lift. That thing is kind of, I'm not gonna say static, but once you set it up, it's kind of there in, in that one spot. So I can't really move the bike around the way I want to. And when I'm done, I can kind of just let the bike down and put this thing in the corner and it's out of the way. I can save space for another bike. But there are trade-offs, of course. With a table lift, yeah, you know, easier access to stuff. There's, it's more manageable having it on a table. But for people that are like me that are still trying to figure out what stuff is and I kind of like the small footprint, this jack works out perfectly. We got some light scuff marks on the heat shield right there. This cam cover right here, it looks to be actually pretty good. There's nothing wrong with that. Now this right foot assembly, um, I found out the hard way about this. It actually, uh, there's no brake pressure. Why? The, uh, well one, the brake line is frayed right there. You can see the, the steel wires coming out. And actually when you press down on this, brake fluid shoots out the back. <laughs> so this brake line is gonna have to be changed out anyway, because one of two things is happening. Either the banjo boat is loose, uh, but either way, I don't feel comfortable having that brake line um, frayed anyway. So yeah, the brake line's gonna have to be changed out. But the rest of the assembly looks fine. On second thought, this is either one of two things. Either they were riding the heck out of this bike or this bike probably went down on the right side temporarily and then flipped over to the left side. I don't know. Keep in mind that I don't really know what happened to this motorcycle. I'm simply taking an educated guess based off of what I see. Like I said, the biggest thing for me was the frame and also, of course, the motor. But the frame being so expensive because one, you have to buy a new one. I think it's like two, twenty-five hundred bucks maybe. And also, every single thing has to come off of the bike and be put on the new frame, which is very labor intensive, not including the paperwork and getting the new VIN number stamped on the new frame. So it is very, uh, it's very labor intensive. So what I'm doing is simply looking at things to see, okay, is that scratched up? Is that dented in? And going off, you know, just using pure common sense, right? Because if this was just completely smashed in, you could probably say, yeah, the cams are probably messed up. There's something messed up there. But being that, you know, the other side, the air box is slightly dented and the derby cover on the primary cover is slightly dented. I could probably, probably reasonably assume that it's not that bad. And also, again, looking at this, you can see that the motor does look reasonably sound. So it's not too far-fetched for me to assume that the majority of this bike is okay outside of uh, cosmetic issues. I haven't looked under the bike yet, but at least we have an oil filter right there. That's a good sign. And also when we got the bike, there were no leaks. So there's nothing leaking out of the motor as far as oil goes and also radiator fluid. So that's good news. <laughs> I'm playing, man. It's air cool. Come on, y'all. But we, of course, also have the key. So we can figure out once we get the battery connected, if like this thing will actually start. I am going to check this oil just to see what we're looking like here. I hate these Indian dipsticks. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely low, but... All right, so the dipstick says that the bike is low, but reading the manual, it says to actually start the bike first and then check the oil. So we got old gas in the tank. I said I wasn't gonna do this, but do y'all wanna see if we can start this bike? Y'all wanna see if we can start this bike? Let's see if we can start this bike. All right, so we got the key and clearly nothing's happening. So obviously we can't see what's going on because we don't have the screen, but let me, Check the battery. All right, so we got some connectors here. Let me take that off. Let's see. Off. Should lift up out of the way. Okay, so our battery is not connected. So um, that would explain why the bike isn't started. In most cases, when they're transporting motorcycles, they disconnect the batteries and also cars. So that's probably the reason why, but we're gonna connect it. Let's see what happens. All right, so we got ground connected. Now we're gonna do positive. Hopefully nothing uh, 
crazy happens. Oh, here we go, popping. It's not a surprise. I have no idea what this goes to. I need to find out, look in the manual. We'll find out. All right, that was actually stupid. That goes to this right here. Pretty sure this is a, one of the computers. All right, here we go. Okay, we got some priming. That's good to know. Oh, you know what? It's not gonna start. Oh, that's good to hear though. Okay, we actually got a, a decent win out of that. The bike powered on. I saw the rear turn signals turn on. I'm pretty sure the ones in the front, well, they would have turned on, but they're not connected. Um, we heard the fuel pump prime up, so that's good news. The problem is that we can't actually start the bike because I think the bike is still in gear. It is not in neutral and the clutch is still engaged and we can't shift and put the bike in neutral. So I guess that'll be the one of the first jobs is to try to get the bike started after today. But it is good to hear that the bike powers up the fuel pump primes, which is definitely good news. Like I said, the fuel pump is right here. So that is, oh, that is good news. So yeah, that is a freaking win. Seriously, I'm very <laughs> happy that this thing powered up and uh, it just shows that uh, we're making progress and it's, it's not as bad as it seems. But there's going to be damage on this thing that um, we're not going to be able to find until we start taking panels off. And that's going to be just the job that's ahead of us to get this bike fixed. And honestly, that's the fun of it. It's, it's, it's essentially Legos. I'm like, it's freaking plastic. Let's see if I get more of it off. Let's see get this entire thing. I don't know what's under here. I want to know. Oh, I was seeing what happened. Oh, look at that. This is making sense, people. How about that? Check that out. Look at that. Wow. It makes me wonder now if when this bike was wrecked, I don't know, I don't know how this got here actually. I don't know if it was before the major accident or if it was after the accident and somebody plasti dipped this, I guess to try to make the cell seem better at the auction? I don't know, but it's not a dent. It's actually just a scuff. They could have put something back. Something could just could have scuffed it up. I don't know, but I see why now they used the plasti dip to cover it up. Just like you, I actually want to know what's behind here and the extent of the damage. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I'm pretty sure there's no uh, crazy uh, way of taking this off. Take this off. Oh, wow. It actually doesn't look that bad. Really, the only thing that appears to be messed up is uh, this plate, which I might be able to put back in place. Dent that back out and uh, buff it out. The same person that I probably get to uh, maybe fix these fenders can fix uh, this, but there is some dirt back here. That's that's pretty interesting. The good news is luckily we didn't start the bike, but more than likely all of that wouldn't have gotten sucked up into the, uh, the fuel system, but that's not to say it wouldn't have because you can see right here, well, that's grease and oil. So that's not too bad, but the bad part would have been um, all of this dirt. So this is definitely gonna have to be, uh, it's gonna have to be cleaned. But hey, that's, uh, it's not too bad. I know some of you are probably wanting to see behind here as well, because you see right there, it's an imprint right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off as well. And we're gonna see what the extent of the damage is behind that. Oh man, check that out. No damage. We are good, man. You guys can see that imprint a little bit better right there. And look at this. It appears to be just fine. So as of right now, that is the damage that I've seen so far. Oh yeah, the signal lights are all messed up. But I quoted a lot of these parts out. And if I, if I were to go back with OEM parts, it is well over $8,000 to replace the parts on this bike. And uh, spoiler alert, 
I'm not putting brand new OEM parts back on this motorcycle. That's freaking crazy. But in all seriousness though, you don't have to have brand new parts for a motorcycle or a car, at least in my state, to go from a salvage to a rebuilt state. All you need is the receipt or the invoice for that part and basically show the state that the part wasn't stolen. So like I said, I'm not gonna put brand new OEM parts on this motorcycle if I don't have to, but at the same time, I'm not gonna put just anything on here. I'm just not gonna go out and get a brand new part if there's a perfectly good used one somewhere else, right? So that is the plan. But this is where we are with the bike. And in the next episode, I'm gonna take more of these components off the bike and try to get a real full idea on what's all messed up on this bike. But I have already started ordering parts for things that I know need to be changed out without having to like go under here and figure out anything. But if you wanna check out why I bought this bike again and kind of catch up with the series, you can click this video right here on the screen and it'll take you to that. But hey, if you liked everything right here so far, you can definitely click that thumbs up button to show your voice some support. And as always, thanks for listening to my story and following the series. And if you're subscribed, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.